I'm going to answer in this video a question that I asked in a live stream earlier this year, and that is, what is the ThinkPad of cars? Okay, for those who know anything about different computers, ThinkPads are the model to have, they are the brand to have, um, because they don't look like a brand. Look at this thing, it's ugly. All right, who's going to get this? Why are you going to get this? You're going to get it, I'll tell you, because it's durable, it's long-lasting. I got this thing for 90 bucks. Uh, it was like 10 years old and it's still running great. Uh, these computers are easy to fix. They're cheap. Um, they, they, I don't know. They're just the best that, as they come, right? If you're getting into any other kind of, they're like the anti Apple, okay? You're not going to get, you're not going to see this at, you know, Starbucks, right? This is not for conspicuous consumption. This is for, I want a computer that works. I don't care about how it looks. And plus, oh, look, I get the best part is right here. The little, I don't know, the, the red dot mouse thing. That is the best part. You might hate those, but that is the best. Um, so what is the ThinkPad of cars? This is a question I had. I actually, at the beginning of this year, I did not know anything about cars. I don't, I'm not a professional now. Um, but, you know, I was, I was looking for a car because I had this Nissan Maxima. Uh, the transmission was dying. And I'll go ahead and say, I, before people click off the video, I'll go ahead and give you a spoiler. This car, a Lexus ES330, during this terrible market for buying cars, I got this thing for less than $2,000, and it is basically the ThinkPad of cars. I don't want to say just this model, uh, but when, it, when I asked people, what is the ThinkPad of cars, they pretty much told me, if you want a good car that is going to last long, independent of how it looks. Now, I think this car looks very nice. I don't really like, you know, the how the, I don't know, the headlights look. But in general, I think this car looks very nice. But what people said is, get either a Toyota or get a Honda. And one thing that I did not know is that Lexuses are actually just Toyotas, right? It's the same company, same people. Um, they they just make, the, their luxury cars are called Lexuses. And actually, Hondas, um, you know, their luxury ver uh, variety is uh, Acura or whatever. So I'm gonna put this in here so it's not, I don't know, in my way. So how did I get this car? How did I get it for less than $2,000? I'll go ahead and say, um, once I learned all this stuff about cars, I was actually looking for a Toyota. And there was a Toyota Camry at some dealer that I was checking out, a used Toyota Camry. I want to say there was one that was like 2012 and one that was, uh, you know, a little uh, older. Um, but he had one of these. It's a 2004 ES330 Lexus. Um, and I really loved, I, I love the way it looks. Let's actually, let's get inside. Um, way back in the day, I used to have a Hyundai Sonata, which was, it was like the luxury brand of the Sonata. And it just had this interior that is a lot like this. You know, you get this kind of fake wood paneling. Um, I, I like how clear this is, uh, and it just drove fantastic. And this one drives, I, I didn't end up getting that Lexus, but, um, uh, because the guy there, he was like, oh, I want $8,000 for it. Or, and you know, I tried to get him down to like 6,000. If I trade in my car, I was like, oh, geez, dude, 8,000. I can't do that. But you know, he didn't, uh, he didn't want to negotiate on that. So I said goodbye. And basically what I did is I'm going to find, I like this model of car. I like the way it looks. I like the way it feels. Um, and they pretty much, like, they have a really good reputation for lasting a long time. So I want to get something like this. I mean, I, I wasn't totally, I'm never going to be totally settled on one model. But really what I did is for the next, I don't know, this was like last summer. But for the next, like, three or four months, every couple of days, I would just get on Craigslist and check for Lexuses, Toyotas, Acuras, Hondas, whatever. And eventually, one day, I was settling and doing work uh, somewhere. And I pull, uh, I see that there's some guy in a, a town like two hours away, nearly two hours, like an hour and a half, who was selling this car for 1,900 bucks. Okay, this Lexus ES330 in fantastic condition for 1,900 bucks. Now, the poor soul, I ripped this guy, you know, off so bad just by buying the car that he wanted to sell at the price that he wanted to sell because he literally, it, like, the used cars are so expensive now, he literally could have, um, you know, wanted twice as much and someone would have gotten, would have bought this thing just as quickly. But I saw it like within 30 minutes of the ad being out there. I drove, I dropped everything, went and got my checkbook and drove out here to get this car <laughs> uh, or at least see if it's legit. Um, and it's been running great for uh, a while. Now, 
Uh, why did he sell this for less than two thousand dollars? Well, here's here's one reason. I think there are little superficial bumps on it, and I think his thinking. He was well. Firstly, you ever talk to someone on the phone? I called this guy up. You ever talk to someone on the phone? And you could you could just sort of tell they're a liberal. You know what I mean? Like I, I he just answered the phone and he had this really you know like NPR voice and I was like, oh great, this guy doesn't know anything about cars. I might actually be getting a good deal. He might not actually be ripping me off. Um, but th so there are little superficial dents like that. Uh, I want to say there's another one back. It, it, it's pretty subtle. Um, yeah, so right here, if you can see that. Uh, so there are a couple dents on it. And how, what's its mileage? Okay, let's look at its mileage. Okay, if you're a normie and you don't know a lot about what brands are good, this kind of mileage might frighten you, okay? Look at that. 212,000 miles, okay? That's a lot of miles, like, if, if you are... If you have like a VW, that's a lot of miles. If you have, you know, a Nissan, it's a miracle your transmission hasn't been replaced five times if you have a Nissan. Um, but 200,000 miles on a Lexus or Toyota, that's like maybe halfway through its lifespan. Or, you know, at least it has, you know, a good couple of 10,000s of miles. I, I mean, this thing is basically worth 2,000 in parts, okay? That that was my view of it. Even if it, if this is going to be a total lemon, I better get this thing because it's nice. AC runs great, um, very smooth. It feels like he just brought it off the lot. Um, so I think this guy's selling it. He just was like, well, 200,000 miles, that's a whole lot. Wow, this is... Uh, oh man, that that's a. I, I feel like this car is gonna break, and it has a little dent, so uh, less than two thousand bucks. And I think he totally ripped himself off. And you know what? I was almost that guy who was like gonna all oh, geez dude him about. Oh well, what about fifteen hundred or something? You know, but you know, I didn't do that because I was like, I'm already ripping this guy off, just like giving him the giving him the money he wants. Um, so all right, uh, other thing, pe Lexus people love showing people this, but if you hold down the unlock button, okay, watch. Yeah, it rolls down all the windows and, I don't know, opens the sunroof. I think that's for, like, in the summer, if you want to cool down your car before you're about to get in it in a couple of minutes. I think that's the purpose of that. You, now, you can't close them back. You can't, like, do the unlock or the lock button to, like, you know, undo it. Because it'll just... I, I thought it was going to do the alarm, but I guess it's not doing that. Oh, man, I, my panic button is broken or something. Anyway. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Uh, anyway, uh, what was I going to say? So yeah, this is the car I got. Um, Lexuses, Toyotas, Hondas, Acuras. I feel like um, they all have pretty good... And now, there were other cars I looked at. I did. I mentioned VWs. I did try this very nice VW Passat. Um, and it had way less miles on it. And, I mean, it was more expensive than 2000 bucks. It was like, maybe like five or $6,000 they wanted for it. Um, but the thing with those, like... Uh, especially European cars. European cars just do not have, from what people told me, a reputation of lasting very long. Uh, so let's look inside. So just to show you that this thing has the typical accoutrements of a car, you know, I don't know. You you basically know how it is. You got your drink thing. I actually like that this can hide away because I, I don't like it taking up too much room. Um, a lot of things open. You got a little coin thingy over here. Uh, got the typical stuff. Parking brakes down there. Uh, that's the trunk. Oh, let's let's look at the trunk. Oh yeah, and you also have typical. Oh, so the other thing right there, the guy, um, the guy who had this car before, he left his COVID nineteen vaccine passport in here, so I can pretend that I got the uh, COVID nineteen vaccine. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, that was the one thing he left in the car. I like he searched it a lot before he left, but I think it was like in the visor. Uh, anyway, in the back. So here we got, uh, pretty spacious, um, it comes with this little net, which is very nice. I actually have, there's my bag of like live streaming stuff and big ethernet cord, which I occasionally use. And I actually got this car for like, or this book for detailing and cleaning up cars. I, I think I just got it at some random bookstore, it's like a dollar. Um, and, uh, I will say in terms of other bad things about the car or like wear and tear, you will see... There's a little wear and tear on this leather here. It's only on the interior side. The outside is fine. This inside is a little worn and torn. Same thing on the passenger side. I don't exactly know why that is. Uh, the driver's side is a little bit worse, but it's not like too bad. Like you don't see it and you're like, oh, this is a crappy car. Um, worst comes to worst, like uh, th there are, again, there's this bump up here and there is some road rash. So I think for, and you know, this bumper has a little wear on the, uh, 
I don't know, the paint. I figure for a couple hundred bucks, I could probably have this thing looking good as new. But honestly, it, you, it's f faults are more obvious in the sun right now. Most of the time, you can't even like see it like that. And it look, just looks like, you know, perfectly fine. You're not going to look at it uh, and think it's a crappy car or anything. Um, and back here in the back, it's the typical stuff here. I actually, I don't know how I feel about like this, this kind of... Uh, I don't know with the I don't even know how to describe that thing, but I don't know how I feel about it. Um, got some cup holders here, okay, typical stuff, uh, and you got a pass through, so you cannot pull these seats down. So this might not be a good car, you know. It's not a pickup equivalent, obviously, but they do have a pass through, which I have used. Like if you have something really long, you need to put through here, you can. Um, and it's also nice, you know, if you're traveling and someone in the back needs to get something from I don't know you. Have, store your candies back here or something they need to pick up a snack right there are ways of using that as well um uh yeah i'm trying to think if there's anything else this thing is just nice uh i'm very happy like i'm not i'm not a greedy person in the sense that i like getting money uh but i think i am greedy in the sense that i'm totally someone asked in the comments uh luke you're one of those uh how much did I get this for kind of guys, aren't you? And I definitely am. I love a good deal. I am greedy for deals. Maybe that's a vice. Maybe I should tone that down. But uh, I love, I like this car, but I love the fact that I got it for less than 2000 bucks. Uh, I'm very happy with it. I actually, <laughs> the month before I got this car, I bought a new lawnmower, a zero turn lawnmower, and I paid to the dollar twice as much on that than I did as this. So the most expensive vehicle I own is actually a lawnmower, not a car. Uh, anyway, so I'm just rambling now. That's it. That's my ThinkPad of cars. Um, you know, happy searching if you're looking for one of these. Uh, I like this model in particular, but, um, you know, I would be happy to have any other kind of Toyota or like a decent Honda. My, the only thing I care about is, is it going to last long? Am I not going to have to buy one in like two, three, four, five years? Um, you know, I, I just don't want to have to think about it. And of course the insurance is actually lower than the car that I had before. Um, I don't know, maybe I pay 400 bucks in insurance a year, something like that, maybe a little more than that, but um, I think for my age, that's, uh, that's pretty cheap. Uh, age and gender, etc. All right, that's it. See you guys next time.